So in today's episode of OCTV, we're talking copper. And not just any copper. We're talking Revere Freedom Gray Copper made right here in Rome, New York in our backyard. Freedom Gray Copper basically took the place of what was lead-coated copper that was removed from the building where it still remained. Uh, the Freedom Gray Copper goes through a process of tin zinc coating, so it looks much like the old lead-coated copper. So later on in this episode, we're going to show you a little field trip we went on to the Revere factory where we met with the O'Shaughnessy's who own Revere, explained all about the process of creating Freedom Gray Copper and actually toured us through the factory. I'm about to show you all of the different aspects of the Freedom Gray Copper that we used. Starting from the top down with some of our dormer tops. All 54 dormer tops around the entire south wing were removed and replaced with Freedom Gray Copper. One particular type of dormer top on the south wing, and there are only four of these dormers on the entire south wing, is the arch top or barrel top dormer. As you can see here, was fabricated, molded in place with a soldered joint over the dormer itself. And sticking with the dormers, you'll notice on the bottom of each dormer there's decorative brackets. These decorative brackets are made out of solid wood and we, what we did is we fabricated through the tin knockers and the architect and engineer a one-piece solution to cover the brackets with a, with a soldered on flashing that goes back in behind the slates and mounts to the mansard wall. All 104 of these decorative brackets have this around the entire south wing. Also with the dormers, you'll see that we coated or we wrapped the entire sills with Freedom Gray Copper. Uh, some of these sills were replaced with mahogany and some of them were deteriorated, but every one of them were rewrapped with the Freedom Gray Copper. Now, down below the dormers, you'll see this flashing that wraps up behind the slates. That is also Freedom Gray Copper. And what's very special and unique are these soldered, individual soldered pans that wrap around the entire south wing. It's the cornice shell pan, and every one of these pans was hand soldered. Another feature of the Freedom Gray Copper was the fabrication and installation of over 500 feet of five inch half round gutters. Now, the brackets you see here that hold these gutters up and wrap around the underside are also made of Freedom Gray Copper, um, mounted underneath the shelf pans onto the framework of the cornice itself. As you can see here, all the downspouts, which are also made out of Freedom Gray Copper, are soldered in place. The sections of gutters are soldered together, as you can see here around the corners. So if you combine all of our dormer tops, all of the intricate flashings, uh, dormer bracket coverings, cornice shelf pans, the flashing behind the mansard slates, and the gutters and the downspouts, we have over one half mile in linear feet of Freedom Gray Copper sourced right here in our backyard at Revere and Romeo. Today, we are live on location at one of America's oldest manufacturing companies, Revere Copper Products. We are going to go inside the factory. We're going to meet with some folks and we're going to talk about the production of the Freedom Gray Copper we used on our building. And we are going to watch it right live in front of us get manufactured. So I'm Amy O'Shaughnessy. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing here at Revere Copper Products. What we do here is we purchase recycled copper. So copper that was originally intended for a purpose and maybe there was a scrap involved in that purpose or it became end of life. We reclaim all that copper, we buy it on the open market. Millions and millions and millions of pounds. We also sometimes buy uh, virgin copper, which is called cathode from, um, that's basically from a mine. And there's reasons why we buy both from an application standpoint and an availability standpoint. But essentially we bring that copper into Rome. We put it into one of our three furnaces. We melt that copper down. We 
poured out of the furnace into an object that we call cake. Some people might call it a slab, an ingot. There's, there's different names for this, but we refer to it as a cake and most people do in our industry. This cake of copper is roughly 20,000 pounds. That cake of copper is now the starting process for all the other products we make. So the cake of copper gets, uh, gets transferred to our rolling mill that's also here right on our campus in Rome. It gets heated up again so that we can work it. We hot roll it out, it becomes a coil. So it went from scrap to a solid mass of cake to now rolled into a, a big 20,000 pound coil. And from there, lots of different operations where one of the markets is the architectural market. So that would be copper that's used for copper roofs or gutters, downspouts, flashing, wall panels, etc. I would say there's just probably a couple of reasons why people choose copper. It's not because it's cheap, because it's not. <laughs> um, copper is um, aesthetically pleasing. So that, that, is a, that is a reason why people choose it. It's got a very uh, earthy feel to it. It will also last a very, very long time. And what I mean by a very long time is it typically lasts longer than the structure that it's on. So maybe a building is gonna last 50, 80, 100 years. The building, something in the building is gonna fail before the copper fails. Um, the other neat piece about that is that when that building eventually does fail and the roof fails and you need to take it off, that copper, send it back to us. We can just melt it down and reuse it again. So copper is infinitely recyclable. Another, um, just, just another positive attribute of the metal. Uh, yeah, and so maybe that leads into that third reason about you know the, the sustainability piece of this because copper will last forever and it's not going into a, a landfill somewhere. I mean, that just makes it an ideal choice for so many applications, but particularly that architectural one. Joining us today is Mr. Tim Murphy, the Marketing and Architectural Service Manager here at Revere Copper Products. Tim, thank you for having us. Thank you. Can you tell us a little history about Revere and the Freedom Gray Copper we came to see today? Well, Freedom Gray came about uh, as a replacement for lead-coated copper. Uh, for years and years ago, that's what they used to give it the gray hue to copper, it was lead-coated. Mm -hmm. But, of course, you know, lead's kind of a bad word now. Right. Uh, it's uh, not environmentally friendly. so. Revere and Follinsby came up with uh, the Freedom Gray Copper, which is a 50% tin, 50% zinc, galvanized coating to go on copper. So now the base is 100% copper with a 50% tin, 50% zinc coating, and now you get all the environmentally friendly at attributes of copper, and none of the lead is there. It's all gone. How about we go in and see some of this copper being produced? Let's go do it. The copper coil you see here is a result of the cake, which Amy talked about earlier in this segment. Here, the coil is loaded onto a machine where the process of making Freedom Gray will begin. The coil starts its journey down the line through a series of rollers. These rollers not only keep tension on the copper as the coil is unwound, but they also prevent the edges from curling. From here, the copper is fed into a vertical accumulator, which kind of acts as a time machine. Not the kind of machine that takes you back in time, but rather a machine that creates time. The time needed for all of the important next steps this coil will go through as it is transformed into the architectural Freedom Gray Copper, which was used extensively on our Phase I preservation project here at the Mansion House. Next, the copper goes through an acid bath and cleaning tank. Here, any solvents or impurities on the surface of the copper are removed. These will be the final two steps before the transformation of the copper takes place. Now, for the dip tank, where all the magic takes place. Zinc and tin bars are manually fed into a molten bath. Here, the unrolled bare copper coil enters and leaves as freedom gray copper. From there, the product goes through a series of drying rolls where the newly introduced tin zinc coating cures onto the copper. 
After that, a machinist uses a micrometer to check for the accurate thickness of the newly created material before it is once again returned to its coil form. And from there, the copper can be cut into sheet form and shipped out to fulfill all of the architectural orders which were previously placed for this product. I hope you enjoyed this segment of OCTV. And we'd like to give special thanks to all of our members and donors who support the preservation and mission of the United Community Mansion House.